there's other things they could dig up. Worse things, much worse. A whole different level of worse. A reporter went sniffing around Hutton's. He discovered some anomalies in the accounts. Oh, God. Ross can never know anything about what happened because the second she does, her position as Prime Minister becomes untenable. I'm going to promise you two things. I will never lie to you, and I will never mislead you. So where'd you get 10 grand from? I loaned her some money for him. I want you to promise me that you won't tell her. I'm this close every day. I'm old enough to be your mother. You excite me, you're fantastic. I do like you. Let's get married. Are you all right? And I'm tired, I'm endlessly tired, and I feel sick. I've got something for you. It's a pregnancy testing kit. I have to get rid of it now. Emily's gone back to number 10. You could keep an eye on her. Now! I'm fed up! It's all about you! You, you, you! My dad, when he worked for Hutton's, laundered a load of money 15 years ago, and you knew nothing about it. There, crushed. That's your career over. He wouldn't. He hasn't got it in him. Ask Kitty. Ask Miranda. You risk losing a lot. Ask him. We need to have a conversation. Miss Emily's just told me something that she probably shouldn't have. Where's Miranda? I think she's in the cabinet with Prime Minister. There's other things they could dig up. Worse things, much worse. A whole different level of worse. A reporter went sniffing around Hutton's. He discovered some anomalies in the accounts. Oh, God. Ross can never know anything about what happened, because the second she does, her position as Prime Minister becomes untenable. I'm going to promise you two things. I will never lie to you, and I will never mislead you. So where'd you get 10 grand from? I loaned her some money for him. I want you to promise me that you won't tell her. I'm this close every day. I'm old enough to be your mother. You excite me. You're fantastic. I do like you. Let's get married. Are you all right? And I'm tired, I'm endlessly tired, and I feel sick. I've got something for you. It's a pregnancy testing kit. I have to get rid of it now. Emily's gone back to number 10. You could keep an eye on her. Now! I'm fed up! It's all about you! You, you, you! My dad, when he worked for Hutton's, laundered a load of money 15 years ago, and you knew nothing about it. There, crushed. That's your career over. He wouldn't. He hasn't got it in him. Ask Kitty. Ask Miranda. You risk losing a lot. Ask him. have a conversation. Miss Emily's just told me something that she probably shouldn't have. Where's Miranda? I think she's in the cabinet with Prime Minister. I need to talk to Miranda. Right. Do you want us to... Leave, yes. Would you mind? So I'm standing up. You've deceived me to my face. You've lied to me. How? You spent hours, months in my company and kept things from me. Have I? Ian laundered some money. Is it true? Is it true? Who told you that? I'm asking you if it's true. 
I think he found himself in a very difficult position. So why did he tell you? He didn't. He didn't tell me. Oh, God. Ross. You better keep talking. Okay. Do you remember when it was in the paper during the election campaign that he nipped some girl's uh, bum? Oh, come on. Is this what you're saying? Ian has laundered money and you've kept... Yes. Fifteen years ago. You thought he'd had a bonus. Who knows? No one. Nobody ever knew because it was never something that became exposed. Sit down, Ros, please. Because when... After the business with the bottom nipping thing, Kitty got it into her head to check out Hutton's just as a precaution. Nobody ever mistrusted Ian. I almost don't know why we did this now. It was Kitty. But we did. She hired a private investigator just to make sure there was nothing else there that could be used to embarrass you. And I swear to God, Ross, I never imagined for a second they'd find anything. Where are you? Don't speak to anyone. I'll be as quick as I can. Bloody idiot. He got mixed up in it. It wasn't his fault. He was frightened. So hang on a minute. You and Ian have talked about this. When? Where? In the flat. In my flat when I was down here working. He had to protect you. No, really, please, don't speak to me. And for God's sake, don't speak to anybody else either. You idiot. What did you do? It wasn't my fault. You laundered money and it wasn't your fault. I'll leave you to it. You do realise that this is it, don't you? You do realise that I'm going to have to resign? Now, that's something we should talk about. Let's not be too quick to assume that's the only way forward. I'm compromised. You broke the law. Nobody will believe I didn't know. I know that's how it seems. I promised never to lie or mislead people. So how do we get round that one, hm? We don't. I'll be downstairs. Don't start drinking. Just tell me. Fourteen, fifteen years ago, Jeff Horton was leaned on by these people. Lone sharks, not the sort of people you mess with. Ah. Jeff wanted no more to do with it than I did, but they weren't the sort of people who went away until they got what they wanted. Ah, I was frightened. We both were. Yes, we could have said no. But we were frightened. They had three quarters of a million pounds and they needed it to disappear. Why did they ask Jeff Hutton? Why not? His company was big enough to absorb it. His turnover was large enough for me to be able to hide it in the accounts, and I did it. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want you to know. You could have resigned. There's any number of things you could have done other than... We'd have found a way around... Ross, I wanted to tell you. I knew you'd know what to do, but... Do you remember what was happening 14, 15 years ago? He had all those miscarriages. One after the other. Eight. Nine. I lost count. Nine. Yeah, where well, you were in tears all the time, that's what I remember. How could I inflict that upon you? Yes, I, I could have resigned. But yeah, there was the mortgage to pay and... I, I didn't know how soon I'd get another job, or even if I'd get another job. And if I had resigned, you'd have wanted to know why. And, and I couldn't... I, I just... I couldn't see a way out of it. And I would have told you. Only then our Georgina arrived. 
And you look so happy. How could I inflict it upon you then? I just tried to pretend it had gone away. What about that ten thousand pounds? Jeff. Jeff gave me the ten thousand. They gave him something and he offered me part of it and I said no to start with. God, I wish I'd stuck to that. Only eventually, when it started to look like we'd... got away with it. I don't know, I just... I just got to thinking, why not? What are you going to do, Ross? Are you going to show me? You don't want to go in there. Why not? What's up? They're arguing. What about? Do you fancy a pizza? Can't you just pretend you don't know? <sighs> if you want me to hand myself in. I'll do it. If it helps, yeah. Right. Ross, you've got two choices. You either go public or you don't. If you go public, he's facing prison and you are seriously considering your position. Because the questions about how much you did and didn't know and when you knew it would be endless. If you don't go public, the alternative... And I know this goes against the grain, but... The alternative is that you persuade yourself you know nothing about it. For the greater good, for the greater good of the country, for the greater good of everyone who has voted for you. You can't jeopardise everything now. You've only just started. Why should this nation lose the most popular Prime Minister it's ever had because of something she didn't do and had no knowledge of? No, Miranda. I can't decide what shocks me most. Him. Or you. A crime was committed. Loan sharks. Hundreds of people will have suffered misery at the hands of these people. What kind of leader am I if I watch that get swept under the carpet? Ross, everyone who has ever sat behind that desk has had some skeleton or other in their cupboard. Well, shame on them. I've got to chair this meeting. Ross. I haven't finished with you. It brings the 43 police authority areas in line with the regional development agency area and European guidelines. What, the, what these larger strategic forces can offer us is not only improved policing at a local level, but also improved capacity and resources to deal with terrorism and organized crime at a national level. And how much does it all cost this regurgitated new labor pack? I just said you weren't here. Over a billion pounds. Ten million of which will be spent on stationery alone. You reorganise everything at huge cost for no good reason. Just to make it look like you're doing something. Just to make it look like you've thought about it, which you haven't. And the end result is negligible in terms of the effect it achieves. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of money. Restructuring's not the answer. Look at the NHS for the last 300 million years. Restructuring is what people do when they haven't got any real answers. Could I just... Sorry. Can we do this meeting later? 
Later? Later, yes. Later when? Today? No, I I'll reschedule it. <laughs> well, yes, if that... Fine. Are you all right? Yes. Catherine, can you hang on? I'm fine. What's the matter? Nothing. I had a termination at lunchtime. A what? An abortion. You did? Yeah. So I might be a bit, you know, um, all over the place. In fact, I, I probably am, so. Sorry. It's ridiculous. I don't cry. I'm sorry, Ros, and I'm sorry I was late. No, oh, you're... You're fine. I'm sorry. I'm... I don't want you to think that I... I mean, I, I have been... Seeing someone, obviously. Um, well, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I, I mean, that obviously it wasn't a baby or anything, you know. It's not just you. Oh, come on. Let's get you upstairs. Come on. Oh. I, I, uh, Some sugar in it. Thanks. I didn't expect to feel. You will. It's not an easy thing to do. I lost a few, not through choice, but uh, I imagine it's similar. I've been sleeping with Ben. Ben? Six Smith. Helps write my speeches. Fifteen-year-old Ben? <laughs> yeah. Fifteen-year-old Ben. He's 24. Actually, he's 25 now. That's why. I see. Yeah. I have been discreet. You've been very discreet. I had no idea. How long have you been... Twelve months. He's in love with me. Well, he says he is. Oh, I don't know, Ross. I'm... Uh, don't misunderstand me. I, I, I am very fond of him. It's just... Well, I mean, it's a joke, isn't it? <laughs> I'm 21 years older than he is. You can just see that on the cover of Private Eye, can't you? Have I got news for you? Fantastic. You know, it's not like you're breaking the ministerial code of conduct or anything, is it? No, God, no. Not exactly. I mean, I just think the worst thing is that my judgment might be called into question. It's not easy being squeaky clean, is it? No. No, I, I know. Are you expecting someone? Him. <clears throat> Ring me, if you want me to pop round later. She's okay. She's just a bit wobbly. Right. Okay. Thank you, Prime Minister. Shit. Fucking shit. Has something happened? No. Are you ill? No. Well, Ros just what? said. What did Ros say? What's the matter? Nothing. I'm fine. What is it? Um, someone, um, died. Someone I haven't seen for a long time. And I should have, I should have made an effort, and I didn't, and... 
I can't see you anymore, Ben. What? It's just not something I want to do anymore. Why? Who was this person? Catherine. I don't know. Not making any sense. No. Why didn't you want to see me anymore? You're not going to like me very much. So, <clears throat> I had an abortion, eight weeks pregnant. Obviously it was yours, and I didn't tell you because... because I didn't. Okay. Baby. No, no, no. Not a baby, no. Just a little speck of... Have you told Catherine? No. You went upstairs with her? Catherine knows nothing about any of this. I wish to God I didn't. Well, that was the idea. What is the most proper solution to this? The most proper solution is that Ian goes to the police and tells them what happened. But as I said, the questions would be endless, and rightly so. They wouldn't stop until they'd found out that Kitty and I had both known all this time. And that Kitty had taken steps to help keep it secret. Speculation would be rife that you'd known all along, and who could prove otherwise? So who does know? Ian, Jeff Hutton, obviously, me, you, Emily, and Kitty. Kitty's assistant? Yes. The private investigator? Well, yeah. What about the people who leaned on Jeff Hutton in the first place? Owen Porlock, he's dead. He was stabbed 17 times by his best friend uh, three, four years ago. But possibly others people he worked with. Oh, we can't rule that out. But why didn't these people pop up before now and say something if they had something on us? So, okay, the most proper solution is a minefield. So what alternatives have we got? Any? I mean, any that we can reasonably contemplate? No, before you go there, there's something else you need to know about Kitty. Does this get worse? Yes, I'm afraid it does. Say it quickly. Kitty gave a number of handouts to a number of backbench MPs to defect to the Purple Alliance halfway through the election campaign. The worst one was a £125,000 personal loan to Liz Shannon. Where's she going? How am I supposed to know? Can I have one in? You can have anything you like. Even if I told you before, it wouldn't have made any difference. It might. It wouldn't. I might have been able to persuade you. It's unlikely. You're... What? You don't care, do you? You don't care what I think about you. It's a very frightening position to be in, Kitty, holding this office. It's about trust. People trust me. That's why they voted for me. Do you remember? Ross. I thought you believed in all that. I did. I do. So why did you make a mockery of it all, then? By offering bribes to these people? Not to mention this bloody business with Ian. Sometimes democracy needs a little helping hand. What? I believe everything you said that first day. I want what you want. And I wanted to make sure that you arrived at it as smoothly as possible. Oh, really? Everyone whose path I may have smoothed was disposed towards you anyway, Rose. But it's a fine line. And if you hadn't had those early defections, you wouldn't have had the big ones. The Catherines, the Hillarys, the Dorothys. You have no greater friend than me. You have no closer ally. Now you can scoff, but it's true. If it hadn't been for me, Miranda here wouldn't have popped up either. 
Would you, Miranda? Jesus. What? Tell her. Remember that first day in the store at Eatonswill? When we met and you introduced us? But it wasn't the first time Miranda and I had met. After I'd been on Newsnight the night before, just after you, Kitty rang me. She said she would pay me to come and offer you my services. I said no. I said I was more than happy to offer you my services, but that I didn't need paying to do it. She's a very idealistic young woman, is Miranda. It's one of the things we like about her. But the thing is, Roz, if I hadn't prompted her, would she have done it? Would it have occurred to her? Who can say? I've only ever had your interests at heart. And as for this business with Ian, you've just got to let sleeping dogs lie, Roz. Rabina. Does she know? Have you told her? No. Right, good. Keep it that way. For her sake. You're not going to resign, are you? God knows what I'm going to do. Nothing's what I thought it was. You, the party, Miranda. And it'd be a shame to give everything up because of things that you knew nothing about. Yes. Everybody seems to think I should bite the bullet, compromise my integrity and get used to it. Like a real politician. But how can I? Do the one thing I promised the people I would never do. Become one of them self-serving, duplicitous tossers. Oh, Catherine rang about an hour ago. She said, could you pop round? Oh, yeah, damn. I better. She's uh, had a bit of an upset. So I said I'd go round. We've had a bit of an upset. Has she not got any friends of her own? Me and Catherine are friends. I never wanted children. I suppose that's why I didn't expect to feel funny about it afterwards. Not the maternal sort? No. I don't know. If I'd ever married, maybe. I bet you've not been short of offers. One or two. Four, actually. Not the one I really wanted, though. Who, dare I ask? You'd snigger. Uh, Paul Critchley. <laughs> How long were you together? Three, four years. I proposed to him in the end. Seriously? Hmm. What did he say? Well, that's when he told me that, regrettably, he... He actually said that, regrettably. He'd been shagging his secretary for the last six months and she was pregnant and he was leaving me nice mm. did you hit him no <laughs> that would have been interesting if you had married him and you'd been on opposite sides of the floor wouldn't it maybe you wouldn't have defected well we'll never know Can I only I... asked sorry I only asked you to come around because I wanted to tell you that Ben didn't handle it terribly well and I think it highly unlikely, but he might get it into his head to sell his story to the Mail on Sunday or something, which would be interesting and embarrassing. And no doubt there'd be cause for me to resign, so. You won't, though, will you? Lord, no. Right. I could do better than you not. You really could, Russ. I would like to donate £10 million. Will you 
form my next government. The amazing Mrs. Pritchard. And one slip, one mistake, they'll crucify you. Catherine say? I didn't tell her. I nearly did. And I thought, how can I? She'd be just as compromised as me. Why didn't you tell me? Ross, I've explained. No. I mean, I could have helped you. Oh, don't cry. Please don't cry. Come on, let's go upstairs. Let's try not to think about it till tomorrow. I am as well as to do that. I'll be up in a minute. I need to think. I'm not going to sleep, so... Go on. Go up. Bloody right it isn't. You mustn't blame yourself. Do I look like I am doing? I'm glad it's come out. <gasps> Liar. It'll be all right. Will it? She can't, nobody can. You all right? I don't know. Do you hate me? You've known this for, what, 12 months? I had no idea. Sorry you've had to go through this. I not felt you could turn to me with it. It's not your fault. There's one thing I always wanted to be. It was a good mum. I've been a good mum. You've been the best mum anybody could ever ask for. I went through this for 12 months and I didn't even notice. You're the best mum in the world. How can I used to be? You are. Nobody else's mum could have done what you've done. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm sorry I've never told you that. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's ridiculous. Fifteen years down the line, it's not as if anyone would benefit if he did hand himself in. But 
the law was broken. That's the point. If only we could go back to Eaton's well. If only we could pick up from where we left off. If only I could resign. Everything I do is so closely scrutinised and it wouldn't go away. Don't resign. I'll get a job. I'll be good. <laughs> if I resign, I have to explain why and he has to face the music. If I don't resign, it might just never emerge. And I have to live with being the one thing I promised the British people I would never be, a liar. Maybe I should just get over myself, eh? I'm gonna sort this out. I'm gonna deal with it. How? I don't know yet. It's six o'clock on Friday the 26th of June. Good morning, this is the Today programme on Radio 4 with John Humphreys and Sarah Montague. The news headlines. Bolivia is the latest country to subscribe to the one day a week... Good morning, Prime Minister. Oh. We're on the phone to the Australian Prime Minister in 15 minutes. Oh. You've got your press briefing with Miranda at 25 past six. And the Foreign Secretary's coming in at 6.40 to go over the latest development in Basra with you. Then you're having breakfast with the Chief Whip at 6.55. Good. 7.15, you're on the phone to President Bush. Mm. 7.30, the leader of the house is popping in. Um, bathroom. Mm. Car departs 10.30, Norfolk 10.50, you land in Plymouth at 11.25, arrival with a PDQ unit at 11.35. Unveil the clerk, brief speech, haven't written it yet, we'll do that on the plane. Uh, pioneering work, fantastic place. And it really is. I must mention Professor Sir Edward Ashcroft. Back on the plane 12.10, land Norfolk 1.00. Uh, 120, you haven't mentioned the Estonian ambassador. We think he's going to want to talk about the EU trade deficit. Again, I can brief you on the plane on the way back. 2 o'clock, you're with the policy unit. 2.20, you're with the Ministerial Committee for Asylum and Migration. 7.40, you're having dinner with five representatives from the Parliamentary Party. 8.45, we've got a call to you from Alvaro Garcia. The Bolivian Vice President. I know. You're with the Chancellor and the Home Secretary between 9 and 10. Then it's just two more calls. The Spanish Prime Minister at 10, then you're talking to Kofi Annan at 10.15. 10.30 boxes, 11.30 evening, press briefing, 12 midnight, bed. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. minutes. How are you feeling? I'm not going to resign. Really? Well, I haven't exactly got time, have I, for one thing. But I'm not shopping, Ian. OK? OK. And I want it clearly understood... Yes. ..that if ever this did emerge... Yes. ..about Ian, that we all stick to the line that I knew absolutely nothing about it. Which isn't exactly true, I know. But it's a version of the truth, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I would say so. Can you ask Richard to come in? Yeah, thanks. What time are you due back from Plymouth? 1.20. I'll catch up with you then. Whatever. Thank you, Prime Minister. In. Morning. Morning, Chancellor. There's some... Ben has resigned again. Has he? Where is he? He'll be downstairs in his office. You've got the economic secretary and the chief secretary in three minutes. Right. Morning, Chancellor. 
Good morning. Ben. Three minutes. Um, I got your letter of resignation again. I haven't opened it. Look, I, I, I know. Uh, I know you're upset and angry and hurt. <laughs> uh, what am I trying to say? Last night, after you'd gone, Ros came over, and I think I realised a few things. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Like what? Things. Um, so, Ben. What? Do you still want to marry me? Obviously, you don't have to say no straight away. I mean, you can think about it. Um, so, that's about it, I think. I... What? Why? I just explained, didn't I? Not exactly. Right. Well, you'll think about it. Kiss me. What? Kiss me. Here, now, in front of everybody. I can't do that. Why not? Because... I'm me. If you liked me enough, you'd do it. Is it? Not here. You're going to say my timing stinks, and you're probably right, but the Home Office IT contract for the Magistrates Court comes up for renewal at the end of this week. Does it? It's a very lucrative contract. You're right, Kitty, the timing does stink. Gets worse. Tracker State Systems is putting in a bid. Of which you are a shareholder? Of which Sir Keith Perry is chairman of the board. He also owns the Tribune. Yes. If the relevant minister from the Home Office could be leaned on to make the contract go his way, we would all have reasons to be grateful. Really? Do you remember when I was investigating Hutton's? There was a journalist sniffing around at the same time. Who you dealt with? He was at the Tribune. I asked Keith to sit on the journalist. And he did. Kept him sweet. Well paid. And he's done so happily. He likes Roz. So, uh, and now he wants this contract. Now, Kitty. That would be so unashamedly corrupt. Oh, come on, Miranda. I used to be a journalist. How do you think I dealt with it? How do you think I shut the frigging little hack up? You didn't ask, did you? Because you knew it would be something along these lines. What if I refuse? You're not in a position to refuse. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. As far as I'm concerned, you're just carrying a message. Yes. How was Plymouth? Wet. What's wrong? We're stuffed. We're screwed. We're fucked. What if perhaps the Home Office was going to offer the contract to this track estate systems anyway? If that were likely, then Perry wouldn't need Kitty to lean on us. I can phone Hillary, find out. And what if she's not going to offer it to them? Perhaps I can persuade her to. You realise this is the thin end of the wedge? Yes. You were ready to resign last night, and now it's just got worse. We're She'll... thinking of the greater good, though, aren't we? Shouldering the burden of our own failings, or at least the failings of those around us, and looking at the bigger picture. I'm frightened. If I was that journalist, I wouldn't let a story like this go away. I might sit on it if I was being paid to, but not forever. I bide my time. I'd wait for years if I had to. And one day, People don't stay at the same paper forever. It won't go away. Should that happen? I can claim ignorance of any of it, can't I? 
Yes. Why should I sacrifice everything I've achieved because of... Yes, Prime Minister. I want the Home Secretary. Tracker State Systems is certainly a contender, looking at the paperwork, but by no means the strongest. Ros is simply asking you to give the contract to a new company, that's all. Tracker State Systems fits the bill. This is something the Prime Minister wouldn't normally be involved in, you see, that's all. As I said, I wasn't even dealing with... I'm sure no one will question it. I think they will. Not if you tell them it's what you want. Then it would be useful to understand why. Is there something I'm missing? It would be immensely helpful to the Prime Minister if you were to push this one through, Hillary. We are expected to be transparent in these matters, Miranda. Okay, so it's a new company, so to be seen to be encouraging a new company would be an interesting choice. It remains an odd choice. Look, of course I can insist that it's offered to track estate systems if you're telling me that's what's needed. But it's my duty to question it. And if you can't explain it adequately to me, then I do begin to wonder, with respect, what's going on? Okay, Hillary. The truth is, I'm in a bit of a pickle. What sort of a pickle? I can't explain because I don't want you to become mixed up in it. But right now, what I'm asking for is loyalty. I'm asking you to trust me and get on with it. I'm so sorry to keep you. Would you like to come through? Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Chancellor? Yeah? I've had the Home Secretary's office on the phone. Hilary Rees Benson wondered if you might have time to see her. When? Today, at your earliest convenience. What for? Hilary? Yes. What did you say? I said that you were already running over an hour and a half late and that your schedule for the next three weeks wasn't promising, at which point she came on the line herself and said she wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. Give me the home office. I'm sorry, I won't keep you. Hello, this is Nina Morgan in Catherine Walker's office. I have the Chancellor here to speak to the Home Secretary. Hello, this is Nina Morgan here in Catherine Walker. Hello, this is Catherine Walker in Catherine Walker's office. Thank you. Hello, Hilary. Ross? half an hour ago. Hillary did. Mm. And that doesn't happen, as a rule. As a rule, she stays in the Home Office and I stay out of it. She was anxious to talk to me about some IT contract that you wanted to see pushed through. So she came to see you? In my capacity as Deputy Prime Minister, yes. She feels that she's being asked to do something for the wrong reasons, something she feels uncomfortable with. And she's worried. It's not always easy to get to the bottom of things, sometimes, with you, when Miranda's around. Oh. What's going on? Is it true that everybody who's ever sat behind my desk has some skeleton or other in the cupboard? No. Well, Margaret didn't. Um, apart from the attempted cover-up over the Belgrano. So she did. What's going on? I've got a skeleton in my cupboard. I thought I could deal with it. But 
I can't. You're not above the law, and you cannot associate yourself with someone who has been, grossly so, frankly, and remain in office. You think I should resign? No, no, Ros, I don't. I think you should divorce him. I'm sorry, but he's in it up to his neck. And why the hell you should go down with him after everything you've achieved is beyond me. What would you have done in his position? I don't know. I don't know who they were. I, I don't know what kind of threats they made. You would have gone to the police. I, I know it's easy to think you'd always do the right thing in a situation like that. You might that. have gone along with it. If you were frightened, you might have done what they wanted you to do. But then, you, I know you, you would have gone to the police, however frightened you were. He's not a bad man. No, no, I don't think he is, but I do think he's been weak. If you choose to resign, don't feel you'd be letting people down. I can look after all this. I don't want to resign. I love this country. I love everything we've achieved. But what kind of a wife, what kind of a mother, what kind of a human being does that make me if I don't stand by him? You've sat on this for over 12 hours. Are you telling me to make a decision? Yes. Would you like to go in? 